Hilchos Yibum Bachalitza, Perek Hamishi. The Laws of Leveret Marriage and the Chalitza Procedure, Chapter 5. This is going to be a little bit of a uh, confusing chapter. It's a lot of details and a lot of specific cases. And I think, as an introduction, it would be worthwhile to go through the four squares on the screen here, because this, once you get this, you can follow everything. When a man dies childless, there's a bond between the widow and the brother-in-law. This we've seen already, this has been the whole topic of these halachot. The ideal way to deal with the bond is either through bi'ilah or chalitza. Bi'ilah means relations. That's what we call yibum. So either get married, full relations. So either you do bi'ilah, you actually have relations, you consummate the marriage, that's yibum. Or you do chalitza, which we learned about yesterday, which is totally dissolving the bond. So bi'ila brings them totally together, chalitza brings them totally apart. Now, there are two other things, one that brings them together a little bit, but not fully, and one that pushes them apart a little bit, but not fully. What brings them together a little bit and not fully is called ma'amar. Ma'amar is like a formal act of consecration, it's like giving her a ring. Okay, giving her a ring would be ma'amar. So you've started the process of marrying her, but you're not fully married. And then you have get, a divorce, which is a bit funny because you're not really married, but if the brother-in-law would give this widow a divorce, according to halacha, it has some kind of significance. He, he, pushes, he pushes her away a little bit, but not fully. Okay? Because they're not really married. You only give a divorce in a marriage. Here, they're just bound to each other. So by giving the divorce, he's not really undoing anything in a significant way, just a, just a little bit. And after they get that completely separate? No. no. Chalitza would totally separate them, get would not. That's going to be the discussion in this chapter. What happens if you mixed up the order, if you did a bunch of things together, if you did only a couple of things. But it's important to know how they work. Bi'ila brings you totally together. Chalitza brings you totally apart. Ma'amar brings you partially together. And get brings you partially apart. Okay? So knowing that, let's go in to the typical scenario. A typical scenario would be, Mr. Red Guy passes away childless, leaving his wife. He got their brother-in-law. Typically, one of these two things would happen. Either bi'ila, I'm not going to have all the words, just going to have the, 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 the pictures. So either they're going to have relations or they're going to do chalitza. That's going to be what typically happens. Says that I'm halacha alef. What if you did something unusual? Hayavama shenasan la hayavam get krisus. The woman, the widow, she's supposed to get either relations or chalitza. Instead, what does he do? He gives her a divorce. Now, it seems like a bit improper because there's no marriage here to have a divorce. But the very fact that he gave her a divorce has halachic significance. And thereby, posla, u seha. He has disqualified her. That means she can never get married to him. And if he has brothers, she can never get married to their brothers. Let's look at this case. This case same case, just as multiple people involved. Multiple wives, multiple brothers. If one brother gives one of the wives a divorce, he has disqualified her, and any of her accompanying co-wives, on him and on any other brothers. In other words, he's partially dissolved the bond. Chalitza would be a total dissolving. This is partially. Enough to disqualify any further relationships between them. Because she becomes now, we treat her as though he did a full chalitza. However, the, the power that this divorce carries is only rabbinic. The rabbi said, look, since giving a regular married woman a divorce dissolves your marriage, so giving this widow a divorce is going to dissolve something. Any divorce which is powerful enough to disqualify your wife from ever marrying a Kohen, as we saw in the laws of divorce, would disqualify the, the Yevama, the widow, from ever getting married and doing Yibum. However, why am I saying it's only a partial dissolving? Because the she can never get married to anybody else till he does a full Chalitza, because only Chalitza fully dissolves the bond. The divorce partially p- pushes them apart, but not fully. Halacha Beis, that's as far as the get. Now let's talk about Ma'amar. Remember, Ma'amar is the thing which brings them partially together, not apart. Hamaymar, 
the consecration, the formal consecration of a Yevama, Afal Pisha Enoi Kaina by Yevama Kinyan Gamur, even though it doesn't bring them fully together. It doesn't acquire the widow fully, like let's say relations would. The Enonasis by Eshes Ish Gemura, she does not become a fully married wife. However, it does have some power. If he were to do Ma'amar, Ma'amar is the ring on the green line. So this guy died childless. There's a bond between him and her, and he chooses to just do the ring. He just does the ring. Already at that point, if she ever wants to undo that, for example, let's say he regrets his, his decision, he's like, you know what, I don't want to marry her. At that point, since he's already given her a ring though, he must undo that ring. She needs to have a divorce. But, to marry somebody else, she'll need to do chalitza. So in this case, he gave her a ring, and to undo this bond, he'll have to do two things. He'll have to give a divorce, plus do chalitza. So before the Halitza, none of the brothers are allowed to them. Right. That's it. Exactly. Finished. Once you've given the ring, you've already began a little process, it's done. Yeah. Halacha gimel keitza, what does that look like practically? Ha'isa maimer bi'yivimtai. A person gives a ring to his yivama. And then he decides, the You know what? I don't want to go forward with this. I don't want to have relations. He now needs to write her a divorce first, because by, the, by virtue of the ring, she has become consecrated to him. And still, he must also do chalitza to her to allow her to marry anybody else. Because the rule is, and this is the guiding principle, that a widow whose husband died childless, she's a yivama, she can never marry anybody else unless the yavam has had relations with her and divorced her, or done chalitza with her. Aval haget, but the get, which is a partial push away, poisla liyibum, ve'ene matira lezar. It's powerful enough to disqualify her from ever doing yibum, but it's not powerful enough to fully dissolve the bond to permit it to a regular person. The hamaymer, the consecration, ene koyna ba kinyan gomer kamehabila does not acquire her fully like the relations does. Relations brings them fully together. Maimer brings them only partially together. So now let's follow some confusing cases. Halacha Dalit. Okay, we have the Yavam on the right side. Nasan Maimer Liyavimtai. He gives a ring. He gives a ring with the intent of consecrating his Yavama. The Chazar Venasan Get Lema'amare. And he gives a divorce. But he says clearly, this divorce, where's my mouse here? This divorce is only undoing the Ma'amar. This is not meant to dissolve the bond between us. This is just to undo the ring that I gave you. Masha Asa Harei Bitloi. So here, what, what he has done by giving the ring, he has canceled by giving the divorce. Vahutra. And she is now permitted to actually do Yibum. So even though we said before that after you give a ring, you have to give a get and chalitza, the Ramam says here, if you specified that the get was to cancel the ma'amar, we go back to, 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 uh, to square one. And she could still do Yibum. The Yerah Ali, the Ramam says, it seems to me, it's not clear in the Talmud, but it seems to me, Shaloi hutra ela le'echav. That by doing this, she, she can only marry any one of his brothers if he has any. But it does not cancel it insofar as himself. The one who gave the divorce, even if he specifies that it's only to undo the ring, she lost any connection with him. She can never get married to him. Now, what if he says, Same case, he gives her a ring and gives her a divorce. But this time he says, this is not to cancel the ring. I want to cancel the entire bond between us with this divorce. I want to treat the divorce like chalitza. So then, that's what the Ramam was saying in Halacha Aleph, Nasan get if he only gives the get to cancel the bond, not the ring, Pasla Allah al Shara Achin He has disqualified her on him and on any other brothers if there are. As we explained, Utsricha get and now she will require two more stages. She will require a divorce which you're going to specify that it's the power to cancel the ring, because the first divorce, you said, is going to be to cancel the bond. That wasn't powerful enough. So you need another divorce to cancel the ring, and then you need a chalitza, lehatira lezar, to actually allow her fully to get married to somebody else. Okay. Now, let's go into some more confusing cases if that wasn't enough. Halach What is the ideal way to do yibum? This is the ideal way right here on the screen. A ring, 
consecration that's given to this Yevama in the beginning. With nothing coming before it and nothing coming after it. Rather, the person who gave her the ring then goes and has relations with her. That's called a kosher ma'amar, a kosher consecration. Because the ideal way is this, this way. You have a guy, the husband died childless, he gives this woman a ring, then he formally has relations with her. Boom, that's the ideal way to do yibum. So now we're focusing on this ring. If this ring comes first, and nothing comes before it or after it except for relations, that's called a kosher maimer, a kosher consecration. However, let's go step by step, taking each case um, into account. The in kodmai get a chalitza, but if a divorce or a chalitza act came before the ring, bein miyavam zeh, bein miyavam acher, whether from one brother or another. Let's look at this case here, okay? I know it looks a little packed. But this is going to be a case where there are two wives. Okay? You don't see the red guy. Let's just imagine he's here. The husband, he died childless. Okay? He leaves two wives and two brothers. So, ultimately, this guy did a ma'amar. He gave a ring to this woman. But before the ma'amar, before the ring, they did either a divorce or a chalitza, whether from this guy or from this guy. See the line going up here to her? Maybe he, did, maybe he gave her a divorce. Or he gave her chalitza. Bein ba, bein betzarasa. Whether you did this get or chalitza to this one or to the co-wife. That's this line here. You see he did a get or a chalitza all before giving the ring to this one. If there was a get or chalitza before it. Vechein in kadamtoi bi'ila betzarasa. Or if he had relations first with the co-wife. You see, the, the relations are only on the lines going to woman number B. Because if you have relations to, with one woman and then you give her a ring, it's actually worth nothing, as we're going to see in Halacha 16. But in this case, if you had relations with the other woman first, relations to her, or he had relations with her. other woman is the second The second wife, wife yes. Bein mimenu, bein me'achiv, whether it's him or his brother. So these are all cases of disqualifying acts before the ma'amar. The Rambam will soon conclude the sentence that this ma'amar is a disqualified ma'amar. But before that, let's see some other cases where there was disqualifying acts after the ma'amar. Follow this slide. The ma'amar was first. He gave the ring first, and then something disqualifying happened. Oisha nasa acharav, get a chalitza. Or after the ring was given, there was a divorce or a chalitza done. Bein mimenu, bein me, uh, sorry, bein ba, bein betzarasa, bein mimenu, bein me'achiv, whether to her or to the co-wife. You can see on this line, there's a divorce and a chalitza. And also from the brother, there's a divorce or a chalitza coming to either this way or that way. As long as there was any get or chalitza given after the ma'amar, oi, shebaal, oi nasan ma'amar acher litzarasa, or you had relations or gave another ring to the other wife. So he gave a ring to this wife, then he goes and has relations or gives a ring to this woman. Bein hu, bein achiv. And that's whether he does that or his brother does that. You see his brother is here having relations or giving a ring to this woman, having relations or giving a ring to this woman. I know it looks a little bit confusing. Both of these, bro- both of these brothers can, ha- can jump into the sack. Yes. Both of them. And doing weird and then, stuff. But before they've done anything, exactly. they can make up it their minds. Aisha nasan la achiv maimar acher or the brother gives her another ring or has relations with her. So in all of these cases, bottom line is, I know it's very confusing, but the bottom line is, something else has happened after the ring was given. This is Mr. Brother A to woman A, gave her a ring, and after this ring, a whole bunch of other stuff could have happened. The point is, if anything disqualifying happens either before, as in the last slide, or after, as in this slide, hareza nikra maimer puzzle. Now this ring is called a disqualified ring, disqualified consecration. Whether the ring, the consecration which came, which these deeds came before it, as in this slide, all the stuff came before the Maimar, or they came after it, as in this slide. Now, I just showed it to you all on one slide. Adam is going to go slide by slide and showing you all the different details. By the way, in this earlier slide, I didn't include the option of giving another ring, even though in this slide you can see it's here, giving another ring. And... Um, the Ramam doesn't, I, I didn't put it in because Ramam doesn't mention it, but it's going to come up when Ramam gives the details. He is going to mention that as a possibility as well. If one brother gives a ring before you give a ring to, to the one you have in mind. 
It's also going to be part of the disqualified cases, as we're going to see when the Ramam details it. So let's see how the Chazayim. Ketzat. What does it look like practically? Okay, let's go case by case. Nasan geit oi chalatz livimtai. You gave a divorce or did chalitza act with your yavam. So brother A gives a divorce or does chalitza to woman A. The chazar v'nasan maimar la oi letzarasa. And then he gives a ring to either her or to her co-wife. That's this line here, him and the co-wife. Bein hu bein achiv, whether he or his brother. So his brother also can have, may have given a ring to woman A or to woman B. In any of these cases, since something disqualifying came before the maimer, that maimer becomes disqualified. Another case. Maybe he had relations, actual relations with the woman number A. Or he gave her a ring. This happened first. And then... And then a ring was given to the second wife, whether by you or by your brother. So here, you didn't do it in the ideal order. You see here, you put the relations before the ring. You did only one of these actions, and then immediately followed that up with a ring of consecration to the other woman. So you've demonstrated here that there's a disqualifying act happening before this ring and after this ring. Therefore, these are going to be called Ma'amar Pasul, also disqualified. Another case. Or this case here. He gives a ring to woman number A. Brother A gives a ring to woman A. And before he has a chance to do anything, this other brother jumps in the game and gives this woman a ring or directly has relations with her. So in all of these cases, there is a Ma'amar Pasul. The original ring is disqualified. It's a bad consecration. There's any, any of the rings, either one, because either one had something before it or after it, they're all disqualified. It turns out that you learn the following. That a consecration. Whether it was preceded by another consecration or a divorce or a chalitza or a relationship. Or, the mimer preceded one of these things in a disqualifying way. It's a disqualified consecration. That's the one ideal case. You give, that's the slide we had over here. You give the ring, the, literally the ideal way is here. You give the ring, and then you have a relationship after giving the consecration. That is the way to do it. That's the lawful way of doing Gibum. First a Maimer, then a Bi'ila. First a consecration, then a relationship. All the other confusing cases have all created a Maimer puzzle, a disqualified consecration. Now let's zoom in on the relationship. The relations itself. It says the Ramam Halacha Tess. We're going to define some more terms. Habi'ila sheboyel hayavam es yavim teitchila ayachar ma'amar ayba. Anytime a brother has relations with the widow in the beginning, or ideally after giving a consecration, and nothing else came before it, that's called a kosher relations. Like here, it's the ideal way. You have relations after giving a ring, that's a kosher relations. Let's take, take a look at some of these cases here. Where am I? Excuse me. But if before the relations there was a ring coming from the brother, so here, in the end, Mr. A had relations with woman A. But before the relations, there came a ring from the brother to her. Or a divorce. Whether from him, a divorce to her before the relations, or a divorce from the brother before the relations. Or the divorce came to the other woman. You gave a divorce to the other woman before having relations with this woman. That's a problem. Or you gave a ring to the second wife, either from you or from your brother. The point is there was a ring given or a divorce given before the relations. Now this relations is called disqualified bi'ila. Um, so we have so far ma'amar kasher, ma'amar pasul, bi'ilak shera, bi'ilak psula. 
And again, anytime you step out of the ideal way to do things, you're already creating a, a, a disqualification. Now let's talk about the chalitza. Says the Rambam, Yud, ha-chalitza she-chaylitz ha-yavam. Li-yavim When a yavam does chalitza to his yavama, this is the ideal scenario. Guy dies childless, there's a bond between them. Here's the brother-in-law, does chalitza, dissolves the bond. Im le kodma davarachir, if nothing else came before it, nikras chalitza me'ula. That's called a beneficial, a good, a perfect chalitza. Vim kodma get oimaymer, but if something came before it, there was a divorce or a ring given to this woman. Whether from this brother or that brother. Whether to her or to her co-wife. You see here, there was a divorce or a ring given to any of them from any of them. Before the chalitza was done. That's called a lesser chalitza, not a perfect chalitza. So now that we have these six terms, we're going to keep them in mind and use them at the chapter. So we have Maimer Kosher, Maimer Puzzle, good consecration, bad consecration, Bi'ila Kshera, Bi'ila Psula, good relations, bad relations, Chalitza Meula, Chalitza Pchusa, helpful, perfect Chalitza, lesser Chalitza. Says the Raman, let's actually visualize it in a couple of cases. Yevamais Rabbis, Habois, Mibais Echot. You have a bunch of widows coming from one home. This Mr. Red Guy married to three women. He dies childless. Kevan Shenivala Achas Mehan. As long as even one of them had a kosher relationship or a helpful chalitza, in other words, either the bond was solidified or it was dissolved, all of the women now are permitted. And the bond of the yavam, of the brother-in-law, has left all of them. But if, instead of this, kosher relationship or kosher chalitza. Instead, there was a disqualified relationship or a disqualified consecration because something, something else preceded or came after it. Nesru kulan liyibum. Then, all of these women are forbidden from ever entering into a leveret marriage. However, utsricha get zusha nivala the one whose bond was partially created by either an imperfect relations or an imperfect ring, needs to get a divorce to undo that act. Sorry, And one of them now has to get a kosher, fully kosher chalitza to permit them to marry anybody else. Because the bond of Yibum never leaves just because there was an imperfect relations. It is powerful enough to require a divorce to undo that, but not powerful enough to remove the bond. The removing of the bond can only happen with a full chalitza. What if there was a chalitza done? So this guy did chalitza this one, but it wasn't a kosher one. There was a chalitza after some disqualifying acts. So now, the woman who got the chalitza, even if it's disqualified, even if it's like a lower level, um, she can get married to somebody else. That's, by the way, why it's not called chalitza psula, because it's not disqualified, it's just lower level. Lower level in the sense that it only helps the woman to whom it was done. But the co-wife, or if there's more, all the co-wives, are still forbidden to marry till they also get a chalitza. Or all the rest of the brothers can redo a kosher chalitza to the first woman. So they have a choice. If there was an, if there was a, an unhelpful chalitza done, either follow it up with chalitza to another one of the women, or follow it up with the other brothers doing another chalitza to the first woman. She'ein chalitza pchusa misaleka zikasibu mibayizeh, because. A lower level chalitza never removes the bond totally from the home. Till either all the brothers do it to the same woman, or all the women undergo it even from different brothers. Even from the same brother, excuse me. Yud Gimel, kol yevama shenivala li yevama. Any woman, yevama widow, who has relations with the brother in law. Whether it's a kosher relations or it's a non-kosher, disqualified relations. Even if he had relations after doing chalitza, so he totally dissolved the bond and then married her. Him or his brother. Whether for the sake of marriage or for the sake of leveret marriage. 
Vafilu Bal Tsarasa, Achar Shabal Bi Ilak Shaira. Even if you had relations with the co wife, not this woman, after doing a kosher relationship with the first woman, whether it's you or your brother, Harezu Tsricha Get. Even though it may have been a non kosher relation in terms of the Torah halacha, but it's powerful enough to bind them that she now needs a divorce. By simply having the active relations, she has become a married woman. Similarly, any woman who receives a, co- a formal consecration from a Yavam, the Maimer, the, the, the ring, Bain Maimer, Kosher, Bain Maimer, Puzzle, whether it's kosher or disqualified, there must be a divorce to undo the power of that consecration. As we explained, the Achar Kach Yasser Isra Maimer, and only then will the prohibition that came about because of the consecration be removed. And now that I'm kind of summarizes what we said. Kvar Amarnu, we've already said, based on everything, She'ein haget doicha hayevama dechia gemura. Giving a woman, a widow, a divorce doesn't push her away completely, doesn't totally dissolve the bond. Dechein ha-maimer ein ne'koinaba kinyan gamur. And the formal consecration doesn't acquire her fully. Avol ha-be'ila koina kinyan gamur. Ve'ha-chalitza doicha yasa dechia gemura. But the be'ila, the relations, fully creates the bond, and the chalitza fully pushes away the bond. Lefichach, therefore, get achar get biyavama. A divorce following a divorce. Giving a divorce and then a second divorce to a widow. A maimar achar maimar, or giving a consecration after a consecration. Moil has some significance. Avol bi'ila achar bi'ila, v'chalitza achar chalitza, but doing relations after relations. Or doing chalitza after chalitza, since the first one has a full power, it either fully solidifies or fully dissolves, the second one, the second one has no power. It's like if you do a, it's like, if something costs a dollar, right? So if you give 50 cents and then another 50 cents, both of those, since they're only partial acquisitions, each one has a power. But if you give a dollar and then you give a second dollar for something worth only a dollar, the second dollar has no, has no power because you've already fully done something with the first dollar. So here also, if you do relations, that's a fully solidifying the bond. Nothing more can have any effect. You do a chalitza, fully dissolves the bond, no other chalitza can have an effect. But if you do a divorce, it's only a partial dissolving, and then you give a second divorce, the second divorce also has some validity because even the first one didn't fully dissolve the bond. As the Ramam will describe it in a minute. Similarly, giving a divorce or doing chalitza after a full relations is nothing because the relations has fully solidified the bond. Now that I'm going to uh, visualize it in many cases. What does it practically look like? Here's the case here. Mr. A gives a divorce to his widow, the Khazar Venasan Get Litsarasa, and then gives a divorce to his co wife. So he's trying to dissolve the bond, but he dissolves it in a weak way. He gives her a divorce and her a divorce. So it's significant enough to forbid him to ever marry the, rel- the relatives of either of the wives. Yeah, because once you... I'm saying any of the relatives. For, once you dissolve a bond between you and a woman, you can never marry their relatives either. Their sisters, their mother, their daughter... So the, the divorce here is powerful enough to do that. If the two brothers gave divorces to the same widow, in this case, see, there's a line going from him to her and from him to her, and there's a divorce on both lines. Both brothers gave a divorce to one woman. She's considered to be divorced to both of them. Both of them are forbidden to marry her relatives. Only one of them has to do chalitza to fully dissolve the bond. If each brother gave a divorce to different widows, Mr. A gave a divorce to widow A. Mr. B gave a divorce to widow B. Call echad. The divorce is powerful for each brother, respectively. This one cannot marry her relatives, and this one cannot marry her relatives. The same would be true if they gave a, a, a ring after a ring. In all the cases, this brother gave a ring to her, and then gave a ring to her. This brother gave a ring to this one, he gave a ring to that one. All the cases we just described, same thing, would, the, 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 the consecration would, have, would, would carry power from each man to each woman. 
אבל היובם, שכל עץ ליבים טוי, וחוזר וכל עץ לצרוסו. But that's only because the maimer and the divorce aren't fully powerful. But let's say you did a chalitza. This case here. Oh, no, whoops, where am I? Just visualizing all, visualizing all the cases of the ring. Here you go. You do chalitza to the one woman. That's it. You've already dissolved the bond. Now you do chalitza procedure to this woman. It's meaningless. Bein hu, bein achiv. Whether it's you or your brother. Here's the picture. But why would he do whether, that? I mean, if you, if you think the one severs relationships just... To both brothers, it works for both mm -hmm. brothers. One Khalitza, yes. Or Be one ignorant. Why, 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 why would he, why, why would he do, do it? One? So, because either all of this, and the rabbi says to him, Has your brother done it? He says, Yes, he says, well, you don't need to do it. Yes, so well, why, actually, why, sincere why about that. Either because he's not uh, familiar with the halacha, or maybe he lives in another, yes, country. that's what's going to come up soon. Or they were in different areas, and uh, this, this, yes, this could have happened. Communication cell exactly. Cell whatever, yes, yeah. So, this is what happens if you do a Khalitza, then your brother does a Khalitza. Yes. If two of the brothers will do the same chalitza to the one woman, the second chalitza means nothing. It has no power. Practical ramification. No, that's the whole thing. And, and, and when the, whoever does the chalitza last doesn't become forbidden to her relatives. Because it's, it's literally meaningless. Yeah. It's literally like going to another woman, random woman, and having her pull off your shoe. It means nothing. If, 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 there's, if there's no bond, it's a meaningless act. The first brother already dissolved the bond. Done. Whatever comes later is meaningless. And we'll soon see how, how this matters. Same thing if you have relations with the widow. And after the relations, somebody does chalitza. Is this my case that I wanted? After the relations, someone does chalitza. Ein chalitza zu klum. The chalitza is worth nothing. Yeah, if the brother then goes and gives a divorce to her or to the co-wife, because again, what came first is a relation. This solidifies the bond. Nothing else can follow it. If the brother, after relationship, tries to give a ring or to himself have relations, he's done nothing. Here you see it. Once the first brother has relations, he has acquired her fully. The Eina Kiddushin Tafsin Beishasish and consecration doesn't take hold on a married woman. Av Olim Nosan Maimer Litzarasa, Oy Baal Tsarasa, but if following the brother's relations, he goes to the other woman and gives a ring or has relations. Ah, Tzricha Get Mimenu Kamesha Be'arno. So here, because he's dealing with another woman, so yes, it's true the relations here has the brother acquiring this woman fully, but the fact that you did a disqualifying act to the other woman after the relations, forces you to dissolve this. And you will have to, this second brother will have to give a divorce to the second wife to undo this disqualified act which he has done. Says the Ramah Malacha Yudzai. So what if this case actually happens, like you were saying before, Philip? It's a confusing case. You had two brothers and two wives, and each one did Yibum. They both married the other woman. And you don't know who did Yibum first. Only the one who did first gets to, get, gets to keep the woman. The other one is actually forbidden. So here, Shnei and Yitziu beget. They should actually both divorce their wives because we don't know who came first and we can't let them both stay. They're both permitted to marry anybody else. They cannot marry the brothers ever. The Fichach, therefore, and this is a classic case, Reuven, Shahaya Abidu Shalayim. Reuven was living in Jerusalem. He has two wives. One is on vacation in Akko. One is on vacation in Tzor. And he's in Jerusalem. And he's got two brothers with his two wives on vacation. Don't ask me why. But he's in Jerusalem. He's got two brothers and his two wives are with his two brothers. Both brothers simultaneously hear that Ruvain died. So what are they thinking? I have a wife here. I got to do either Yibum. I, I got to take action. 
Hadin Noisin, the law dictates, Shaloi Yabim Echad Mehen Ad Shivada Ma'asa Achiv. No brother, like you said before, no brother can take the, the wife in Yibum till he finds out what his brother did. Because relations that follows relations is disqualified. Only this guy, let's say, if he had relations first, will get to keep the woman, not this one. So you must find out what happened to your brother. Kadam Echad Mehen Biyibim. What if one of them didn't listen? He didn't wait for the court to find out. He just took action. That's it. I, I like this woman. I'm taking her in Yibum. Ein moitzin miyadai. Now it's innocent till proven guilty. We don't force her out of his hand. Ad she yivada she'achiv yibim tchila. Unless we can find out with certainty that his brother actually did Yibum first. Ratzah ha'echad lachlo yitzkaydem she'yada ma'asa achiv. Interesting case. What if he doesn't want to marry her? He wants to divorce her. He wants to do chalitza, I'm sorry. It's like, look, anyway, I don't want to marry her. I want to do chalitza. Then you don't have to wait. You don't, you don't stop him. Because anyway, if he's first, so then, good chalitza. If he's second, meaningless chalitza. Because she already had relations with the, with the first brother, the other wife. So therefore, we don't, we don't stop him from, uh, from, from, from doing that. Okay, now we're kind of shifting gears a little bit to specifically a young Yavam, when there's a young brother under Bar Mitzvah. And I didn't have time to make pictures to fully depict each case, but we'll try to see if we can borrow from some of the earlier slides. Yavam Katan ben Tesha Shanim Echad. If you have a brother in law, let's just say in this case here, this brother in law here is nine years old. He's not fully adult. If he were to have relations with this woman, it doesn't have the power of full relations. It's considered to be a ring. Whatever power an adult giving a ring to the Yivamah would have, a child has if he has relations with her. In the sense that it doesn't fully solidify the bond between them. It doesn't fully acquire her. So what if the nine-year-old gives a ring? If his relations are as powerful as a ring, so how powerful is his ring? If he gives it first, if that's the first thing he does, it is helpful. And it would disqualify him or disqualify her to any other adult brothers that he might have. So this is the child. Here's the adult. He gives this woman a ring. Now, no other brothers can marry her. But if he gave the ring at the end, in other words, after some other acts, it's actually meaningless. Also, a child who performs a divorce or chalitza, it's nothing. We saw the other day. Chalitza has to be an ish. You have to be a man to do chalitza. Not, otherwise, it's worth nothing. Whether in the beginning or the end, I don't care when you did it. The only thing which counts for something is relations or giving a ring in the beginning. Giving a ring later. Divorce and chalitza, worthless. You test, let's visualize it. Keitza, how does it look like? I'll try to borrow a case. From here, um, you know, let's use this slide. He's a child, he has relations with, his, with the widow, or let's just convert this into a ring, or he gives her a ring, okay? Pasla al sha'ara achin. By doing that, he has disqualified this woman from ever marrying any of the other brothers. Avalim asa hagadol maimer bi'ivim But if, let's say, I'm going to use this case over here. Okay, we'll call this, just, you know, it's a lot of things, we'll just in our minds, erase it. This is the adult, this is the child. The adult gives a ring to the Yevamah. And then following up with that comes this kid and does the ring, gives a ring to this one or a ring to that one. Since his ring is coming after something else, it's totally worthless. And he has not disqualified her from marrying the older brother. What if it wasn't a ring? He had relations. So here, guy gave a ring. Comes the second brother, the kid, and has relations with her or relations with the other woman. Now, the relations, even though it followed the ring, is powerful enough to disqualify her on the adult brother. Like two brothers who would do a ring after a ring. Because the relations of a child is like a ring of an, of an adult. So just like if you give a ring, and then your brother gives a ring. They're now disqualified from both of you, so too if he gives a ring. And you have relations as a kid, 
it also disqualifies the other brother. Halacha chaf. Ben tesha shanim v'yem echad sheba al yivimta. So we're going to use this case again to visualize it. Just do our best. All right, we'll just use this and see if we can make the best of it. So the nine-year-old kid has relations with the Yivama. The Chazar Achiv Hagadol Uba Aleha Echalatz Einasan Get La Eilat Sarasa comes the second brother, and this is the reverse. So here he's the kid. This is the adult. So the kid has relations. Comes the adult and does any of the acts. He does relations or chalitza or a divorce to this woman or to the co-wife. He has disqualified this woman from ever marrying or staying married to the child. If the, this kid, after having relations with her, would have relations with the other woman, or if there were two kid brothers, they're both nine years old, and he has relations with the other wife or with the same woman after the first kid having relations, they become disqualified like any two rings following each other. Because again, the relations of a child is like the ring of an adult. So whatever power the ring of an adult has, the relations of a child will also have. Interesting case. Nine-year-old has relations with his Yivama while he's a child. You know what? Let's call him for purposes, easier purposes, 11-year-old because he's just before Bar Mitzvah, okay? He's under Bar Mitzvah. He has relations with her. Then he gets Bar Mitzvah. He becomes a Gadol. And he never again, had relations with her after he becomes bar mitzvah. If she wants to go marry somebody else, she needs to have a divorce and chalitza. Get mi pnei a divorce to undo the relationship. She kemaimer, because the kid's relations is like a ring, so you have to have a divorce to undo a ring. Vachalitza lahatir lazar. And the chalitza to permit her to the other people, like this. In this case. Yeah, because we consider the relations as if it's a ring. So you have to have a divorce to undo the ring and a chalitza to undo the, the, whole, the whole bond. Because yeah. she never had relations with him in a way which would fully solidify the relationship. So therefore, he just has to undo it with a divorce. But if yes, if he had relations with her after became bar mitzvah, she's a fully married woman. No chalitza needed at all. Just a divorce. A divorce like any other divorce to undo a marriage. Chav beis. We just spent a whole bunch of halachot talking about a nine-year-old. The truth is, all of these laws apply whether you're a nine-year-old, in other words, under bar mitzvah. The same would apply if you were 20 years old, but hadn't yet produced any physical signs of puberty, in which you're, you're right, you're a doubtful, um, impotent man. As we've explained in the beginning of this book, the same laws apply. Huh? No, this would be if you don't have puberty and you don't have any of the impotent signs. Like you're kind of like in a, like in a, like in a middle stage. Chav Gimel, that all now, all that we discussed before was on the side of the man. Now, let's talk about the woman. Kitana shara'uya lemayin v'hacheirashas. A minor girl who is still in the category of allowing to refuse her marriage. She doesn't need a divorce. Or a deaf mute. Afal pisha kidushe shteyen midivrei seifrim kamesha b'yarnu, even though both of them when they're consecrated. It's only rabbinic. It's two types of rabbinic consecrations. In other words, the reasons that the rabbi allowed a minor girl to get married in a deaf mute is two different reasons. The minor has kiddushin able to take hold on her in order so people shouldn't treat her promiscuously. They, they allowed her to get into a marriage and she'll be protected. The kiddushin tluyin achetagdil. When you give a minor girl kiddushin, they're, they're hanging in the balance. They're, not, they're, they're like kind of waiting to go into effect when she becomes bas mitzvah. The chayreshes, but a deaf mute, she's a full adult. A different reason. They allowed her to get married just so she shouldn't stay single forever. Let's look at this case, for example. All the women coming out of the home are either minors or deaf mutes just like in a regular case, having relations with one of them will exempt them all because they're all married in the same type of way. If they're all minors or if they're all deaf mutes. But what if they're no? What if they're a mixture? If one is deaf mute and one is a child, so now you have to undo each type of marriage separately. Relations with one doesn't exempt the other because. When you undo this type of marriage, 
That's the girl type of marriage, but you're not undoing the deaf type of marriage. Or the opposite way. The Ketza Takanosam. So what's the only way to fix them? Milamdin's cute trick. Milamdin haktan lashatamoyin. You tell the young girl, refuse the marriage. Dissolve the marriage to begin with. You're still young enough that you can say, I don't want a husband. So we teach her to do that. And now what's left is just one woman, the deaf mute woman. The kindness is sacheresh. And you can marry the deaf mute. The imratza, the garsha. Now, if you want to divorce her, not the... Uh, what happens if you not... use a monum deaf mute? <laughs> then you got a double... <laughs> the imratza, the If you want to divorce the deaf mute after you do the yibum with her, kaisiv la get achar shayava yaleha betutar lazar. Simply write her a divorce after relations with her, and she's permitted to marry anybody else. Okay, so till now we discussed both women are disqualified. One's a minor, one's a deaf mute. What if one is normal and one is deaf mute? So here, I'm just going to use one of these slides here again. We'll just have to visualize um, the concept. So you have one woman who is mentally stable, the other woman is deaf mute. If you do something with the competent woman, either relations or chalitza, it helps to exempt the other woman. Maybe, the, maybe this slide will be better. If we have, uh, you can see it here. Okay, we'll see the actions here. So if this guy actually has relations or does chalitza with this woman who is fully competent, if this woman is deaf mute, she's taken care of. The ain bias hacheresh but the other way, no, no good. If he has relations or does chalitza to the deaf mute, doesn't take care of the competent one. Because her whole marriage is rabbinic. Same thing if you have an adult and a minor. Okay, one's an adult, one's a minor. Having relations or doing chalitza to the adult one takes care of the minor, but the minor doesn't take care of the adult. What if they're one, both of them are minors? Minors that are fit to refuse the marriage. And the brother-in-law has relations with one of them. And then he himself or the other brother. So they're young. The girls are young. Yeah. Yes, they're, they're both young. 12. But yeah, under 12. Under 12. 11 and a half. Well, yeah, yeah, 11 and a half, yeah. Anywhere on the, on the bus mitzvah. So then one brother has relations with one of them, and he himself goes, or his brother, to the other woman as well, other girl as well. Here, since they're both minors, so the second relation doesn't disqualify the first one. Aval, you do the trick again. Tell the second woman to refuse the marriage, second girl. Let the first guy keep the first girl that they have relations with, because that's the first act, and we want to solidify that act if we can. Same would apply to a young girl and a deaf mute. They're both treated differently, but the same law would apply if you ended up having relations with both of them. Let's say the Yavam, the brother had relations with the young girl, the minor. Then you or your brother have relations with the deaf mute. You haven't thereby disqualified the minor. Just still give a divorce to the deaf mute. Because relations with a minor is actually more significant halachically than with a deaf mute. Because a minor later on will be fitting to you. A deaf mute will never. Better to make sure that we keep the young girl married and divorce the deaf mute. But if, in fact, the opposite happened, if the first brother-in-law had relations with the deaf mute and then him or his brother had relations with the minor, so now the minor came second, it has disqualified the deaf mute. And what you have to do is you have to get rid of them both. Tell the young girl to refuse the marriage, and get rid of the deaf mute with a divorce. One mentally competent, one deaf mute, and you ended up having relations with both. If you first had relations with the competent woman, that's a full yibum, straight up. 
So then, if you or your brother afterwards have relations with the deaf mute, you haven't disqualified the competent woman because relations after a kosher relations is meaningless. Nevertheless, the deaf mute needs a divorce to dissolve that relations. If the opposite happened first with the deaf mute, then you and your bro- or your brother went to the competent woman, she has disqualified the deaf mute. Both are messed up. The deaf mute must be divorced, and the competent woman must be divorced and have chalitza done to her to fully allow her to marry somebody else. Lamed, final halacha for today. Same scenario, adult and a child. If the relations was first with the adult, and then you or your brother had relations with the minor, you have not disqualified the adult, you simply tell the young girl to refuse the marriage. This is the only case where the second act will not disqualify. You first have relations with the child, and then with the adult, here, since the child can undo her marriage retroactively, so what you do is, tell the young girl to refuse the marriage, and then you can actually keep the adult, because relations with her totally solidified the bond, you totally acquired her, and therefore you can stay married to her by simply having the young girl undo her marriage retroactively.